Good morning once again and welcome to How Not to Read Your Bible. <clears throat> we are looking this week at light versus dark and the differences that we show us. And today this the genre is the heart of art. We're looking at a painting that's painted by uh, William Holman Hunt and it's called The Light of the World. You may recognise it from lots of different places that it is portrayed on the internet, in books, in churches. We've even got a copy of it in our church. Um, and this one in particular we're going to look at today is from St Paul's Cathedral. Harmon Hunt's painting, painting is one of the most viewed 20th century art pieces in the world. It's a rich tapestry of pictures and symbols that are a puzzle to be unravelled. And the verse that he has linked to this painting is when Jesus says in John's Gospel, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is the third version of this painting by Hunt. It was painted in 1904, and as I said, it hangs in St Paul's Cathedral today. It's the most travelled artwork in history. It's been to Canada, South Africa, New Zealand and Australia. But let's look at its meaning. Let's try and look at some of the things that it shows us about Jesus being the light of the world and how that helps us to in our quest to find the difference between light and darkness. So it has lots of mini pictures in this larger painting, this larger picture all over it. Let's look at the two lights that are shown in the picture. The first is uh, the lantern, which is down by Jesus' feet, and it's meant to signify conscience. So Jesus shines a light on the areas of our lives that maybe we don't want to be exposed. So our conscience pricks us. Our conscience tells us, oh, let me need to do something about that, things that we should confess. And the halo is the other light that's around Jesus' head. And that shows us exactly who he was. He was the light of the world. And although we can't physically see Jesus or see a halo around his head, that's how he's portrayed in paintings, that he was holy, he was light, and he brings a very, very positive force into our lives. The door in Holman Hunt's painting, it represents the human soul, it's us. It's Jesus knocking on the door of our heart. And interestingly, it has no handle. It can only be opened from the inside, which is a very significant part of the painting from Holman Hunt's point of view, because Jesus never forces himself upon us. It's always an open invitation from him. He wants to come into our life, but he won't force us to do that. He wants us to choose to do that, and to choose to do that because we love him. The door has rusty nails and hinges. It has overgrown ivy to show that it hasn't been open recently, maybe never. So this is a new um, invitation for the person. It's a new concept. It's a new chapter in their life if they're interested in actually taking the, the opportunity that Jesus is offering them. The morning star appears above Jesus' head. This signifies the dawn of a new day, a fresh start if we want it. Jesus is coming, knocks on the door and says, I will come in to uh, eat with you, spend, your, spend my time with you, spend, back, spend our lives together if you want to. And we can do that from fresh today. It can be a brand new day for you. So the morning star signifies it's morning. The night is over, the darkness is gone, the light is here. The orchard of apple trees in the back. Uh, it's thought in uh, church history, this may not be true, but it's thought that the tree in the Garden of Eden, the tree of knowledge, was an apple tree that they ate from. So this is Holman Hunt signifying the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden. Fallen apples below goes God's fruit in us that has gone bad. Things we do, things we get from God, and we misuse them sometimes. And finally, uh, big irony in this painting in that Jesus is portrayed as the person knocking on the door. He's the person that's come to offer the invitation to bring freshness into the, the, um, the person's life. But actually, he himself then becomes the door of our lives. The door at the moment when we don't accept Jesus, it's old, it's crusty, it's rusted. Um, but once Jesus is accepted into our lives, then he becomes the door and he decides what goes in and what goes out.